Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Coleman and I have the pleasure of speaking with Forgotten Hollywood's Unforgotten Man, Manny Pacheco. <laughs> is that like the Marlboro Man? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, Manny, we were talking uh, not too long ago about um, famous uh, or non-famous actors. Mm. In other words, people who who were really not actors who appeared in films but became famous because they appeared in film. Mostly uh, what today we'd call reality people. But the big example was, um, um, I, forgive me the, the name of the film, Russell, uh, World War II uh, amputee. Uh, the best in, years uh, of our lives, yeah. Right. Harold, Harold. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for filling that in. So are there a lot of, I, I can't think of any others, to be really honest, uh, uh, other non-actors who became famous? Oh, yeah. Uh, but I, I would, uh, let's begin with Harold Russell, because he's really the, probably the most celebrated. Um, before, I, before I talk about him, though, this is, you're talking about people who actually had casted roles as opposed to somebody who does a cameo or a walk-on. You get George Steinbrenner showing up in Major League and all right. of a sudden he's there for like two seconds and then he's gone. Right. No, we're not talking about, we're talking about a person who appeared throughout the film, actually had, was cast in the film, but really had no screen credit to speak of prior. And Harold Russell is the most celebrated. Um, William Wyler was actually looking for someone to play the part of, uh, of Homer, the returning war, uh, Homer Parrish, the returning war of a veteran who happened to be an amputee. And it, he wasn't sure whether or not he was going to cast an actor, much like, you know, John Garfield in The Pride of the Marines, for example. And uh, he was watching a documentary video on how uh, the new... Um, equipment or contraptions that they would use for these returning soldiers were making them uh, able to live more normal lives. And in this documentary, they really featured Harold Russell. Oh. And, you know, it, it was basically narrated that he wasn't acting. They were just happening to be in the hospital at the time. Harold Russell happened to be there. And they were showing how his contraptions were being used, his apparatus. And they said, wow, this guy's got charisma. Maybe we should cast him as our Homer Parish. And um, they did. And he turned in, I mean, just a wonderful performance. It, poignant, ferocious, and um, very real. And he played off of Frederick March and Dana Andrews, and particularly his love interest at the time, uh, Ka uh, Kathy O'Donnell. And, you know... He was awarded with a nomination for an Academy Award, but that was the year of Claude Rains and Notorious. So they figured, well, Claude's due. This is his third nomination. This is the year of Claude Rains. So, but but we are so enamored by what Homer, what Homer, what uh, Harold Russell did, that we're going to give him a special award. You know, to, to yeah. present for the courage of all the military men who are returning from war. So they give him the award, but lo and behold, he wins the Best Supporting Actor Oscar as well in a major upset. So he is the only actor, a non-actor, to actually win two Academy Awards for the same performance. How about that? Mm. Wow. You know, great, I'm kind of thinking that, uh, speaking of uh, war, uh, probably one of the most famous non-actor actors who actually became quite an actor was Audie Murphy. Yes. Yeah, he yeah. was. he was cast... By none other than James Cagney. Really? No kidding. Know, it's not that Audie Murphy, Murphy wasn't known. He was known everywhere. He was in Life magazine. He sure. Was but not as an war. actor. Not as an actor. No, no as, a, as a war hero. Yeah. yeah, as a war hero. And 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 James Cagney and his brother uh, came across this individual, Audie Murphy, but then they soon found out that he carried a lot of baggage, you know, all of the PTSD that goes on. He was not a well man. And oh, he really? was not, and he was not controllable. So they basically sold his contract off, I believe, to Universal. And uh, then he, be, you know, they just they wanted to tell his story, and and they put it in a movie to Helen back, and they cast him as the, uh, as as himself. Yeah. And and uh, he was so successful and so good at it 
that he spent the next decade making making a, just a slew of westerns. Yes. And, and he was very very good. He became an actor, and he became a good actor, and he and he played opposite some really good talent. I mean, I, I I'm James Stewart comes to mind. I believe Randolph Scott as well. He was just uh, one of these non-actors who really could have been an actor had he not gone to war anyway. But mm. I don't think he would have been given the opportunity. I don't think that that was his his direction. But his his heroics during World War II changed all of that. So yeah, I think Audie Murphy is a really really good example. Give us some another. Give us some others. Yeah, Manny Manny, before you go forward, uh, did Bill uh, not Bill Russell? Did Harold Russell ever go on to do other films? I think he did one, one maybe two others. Um, I know that it, when his wife became very, very ill, and he didn't have the money to care for her, that he actually sold one of his Oscars to oh, raise the money to bad. care for his wife. Yes. So yeah. that was really um, sad, but still really wonderful human being that Harold Russell was. Yeah. Uh, another name that comes to mind is Joseph Welch. Now that name might sound familiar, but he was the man, the lawyer, who called out Joseph McCarthy in the famous Have You No Shame speech. When um, when Joseph McCarthy went after Hollywood, there was nobody there to fight back, and a lot of folks lost their, their jobs as screenwriters and actors and directors. But when he started going after the military for communism, uh, many folks put their foot down, uh, colleagues of the senator put their foot down, but it was the articulate Joseph Welch who finally said, Mr. Senator, have you no shame? And he just went on and on and just on live television, just ripped out the heart of the argument of Joseph McCarthy. He became so famous and so well known, this little milk toast um, uh, of a man with a, with a bow tie, that he was cast as a judge in the film Anatomy of a Murder. And the part was, was laid out for Spencer Tracy but he was go about to work with uh, Stanley Kramer in uh, in um, Inherit the Wind, and he didn't want to do two trial movies back to back. So they turned to a non-actor, and Joseph Welch was absolutely spectacular. I believe he was nominated for either a SAG Award or a Golden Globe Award, and he probably would have done more roles. He was so good at it. But about a year later, he died of a heart attack. Oh. So he didn't get a chance to to really fulfill... Uh, I think his promise as an actor and, and his promise as an actor, I mean, as a man in, in his 60s, I mean, he was going to begin his career in much the same way um, um, Sidney Greenstreet began his career in his 60s as well. So, mm. Wow. Interesting topic. Actually, there's some, yeah, people, it, there's some people that um, uh, were maybe performers of some kind. I'm thinking like Will Rogers, who no, yeah, I, I no. think they remember to be in a number of films. But he really wasn't an actor. And I don't even know in the films that he was in whether he's really more a commentator, a narrator. Uh, no, no. He, he was in silent comedies really early on. He's a pioneer in, yeah. in early film. No, no, no. He's, he, was a, he was a filmmaker through and through. Oh. He saw the, the magic of film way early on. I mean, we're talking in the, you know, the 1918, 1919 into the 1920s. Oh, no. I, 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 he, he, bought, he bought into cinema real early. And so, um, but there is another actor in the 70s, Dr. Hang Noor, who was in uh, in The Killing Fields, oh, won yeah. himself an Academy yeah. Award. Uh, again, died prematurely. He was murdered as well, well, you know, as a, a refugee. I, I don't have the details on why he died, but he was murdered. I do know that. And I don't think that he was going to go on to have a film career, however, but he did make the one film, earned himself an Oscar, and so, you know, it's amazing how these non-actors are really beloved. I mean, really beloved mm -hmm. by by uh, the the academy, the, the the voting membership. They they really love to award the underdog, if if, if you if you will. So, um, yeah, I I don't think there was many. I mean, I probably could sit here and if we really thought hard enough, we could come up. Let with me other come things, up with. Let I, me let me throw one out to you. Uh, I was thinking uh, of two performers who became uh, uh, actors, uh, both uh, women, uh, and one actually became a fairly good actor. Uh, I was thinking of Jennifer Lopez, although she made a whole bunch of 
maybe at best B movies, no, she, but, but share. What about share? Share was, a, she, you know, I don't count people who are in, in front of an audience or a stage. Okay. I mean, it'd be, I think a better argument might be sports figures like Merlin Olson. Mm. Or Fred Dreyer. I mean, yeah. but they had great TV careers. Yeah. Uh, um, O.J. Simpson. How about that one? He had a pretty good film career until you know until all of the uh, all of the stuff went down with him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. was doing the Towering Inferno. He was in those Naked Gun films. Yeah, the airplane, uh, the airplane movies. Was he in those? Uh, no, 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 no. That he was in the Naked Gun uh, one. You're thinking of Kareem, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, which is another non-actor who actually appeared in the airplane film. Right. Well, so, that was more of a cameo. Right. No, yeah. no. He's you no. Know, he was cast. He, he actually was was billed, and he was in through half the movie. No, no, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, there are sports figures who can make the transition from playing sports to actually appearing in movies that are not even just cameo roles. I mean, that are set roles. And I think OJ, you know, as, as really as controversial name as OJ is, he might be the best example that so, I can come so up with. So let me ask you this. For the, our most favorite non-actor, I wonder if he's ever been in anything. Manny Pacheco, have you ever been uh, cast in a movie? No, I, I've been on television. Obviously, I was in, on on Santa Barbara, but I did mostly voiceover work for Santa Barbara, and I did a couple a couple of extra scenes as well. And I was in a documentary. Oh, was, oh there you go. I was in a documentary called Karaoke Fever in two thousand one, and it aired. It actually aired uh, at the Los Angeles Film Festival, and that was kind of cool. I got to go to this a midnight screening of that. And I was, of course, on the Emmy-nominated talk show uh, in studio. So I'm, I'm proud to have on my resume a, a, a program that was actually Emmy-nominated. But, you know, as far as movies go, no, I, I, I'm waiting for that first uh, callback. <laughs> well, you know what I think? <laughs> I, I, your close -up, I, I think that yeah. if Hollywood is watching uh, uh, today, um, you, I don't want to put your phone number out there because all your adoring fans will start calling you. And I know that you have a limited data plan of only 100,000 calls a month. So, uh, <laughs> well, this has been interesting, Manny. Um, uh, the only things we haven't talked Say about are alien, aliens like E.T. and people like that. But uh, I, I guess they didn't really quite fit uh, the, no. pro the profile. <laughs> As usual, we don't know where, where Art's going with this, so this is a good time to end. <laughs> yeah. You got, boy, you, you, you got that message. Yes, I did. Uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.